Father, I thank you that there is grace for everyone who's in depression right now, for everyone who has given up. If you have a broken heart and if you feel like devastated and you don't know how you could ever continue, this message is just for you. This message comes from heaven to give you new hope and new life. Listen to what God Almighty says to you in His love. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, who formed you, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. But listen, many times we say, God has forsaken me. Surely, my Lord has forgotten me. God's answer in Isaiah 49 is, Can a woman forget her nursing child, that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. I will never forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. This is a picture of Jesus on the cross where he says, surely all your punishment, all your pain, I know exactly what you're going through. And in Revelations 1, 17 and 18, he says, fear not. I am the first and the last and the living one. I died. And behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. He has overcome every darkness. And he says, I am the light of the world. So if you're sitting in darkness right now, if you feel like your soul is in total darkness, you should know, you can know and be assured that Jesus is there. He's there in your darkness. He's there in your hopelessness. And he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you because he knows our weakness. He knows the pain of your heart like nobody else. And he has cried every tear for us. And he has felt every pain. And that is the reason why in this message you're gonna see now, he gave me these tears and I was like weeping uncontrollably at some point of the message because my heart was so moved. So don't be embarrassed, but let me tell you, it is the heart and the compassion of God. And I pray that you can feel it and receive it and believe the word of God. Jesus is reaching out his hand and he says, please, you don't have to perform. You don't have to show that you're good or perfect. You just have to grab my hand. And even if your heart cries, I hate, I want revenge, I don't want to forgive. God understands you. God knows you. And he says, if your heart is like a stone, I've promised I will take away that stone and give you a heart of flesh. If you only let me, if you only reach out your hand, and if you can't reach out your hand, just reach out a little finger and God will get a hold of you. He will help you because he's an ever present help in times of trouble. He's there. He's right there where you are. If you just let him help you. So open up your heart right now. I ask you in the name of Jesus. God bless you.
And he knows how to comfort our heart, even if we don't know how. If you've lost a child, if you have went through a divorce, <laughs> if you went through such a pain that you think this is impossible, why do I live on this earth? I don't want any more. If that's you, I want to pray with you right now. <laughs> This is the Spirit of God who's fighting for you and says, I want you to stand up again. I don't want you to kill yourself. No, you don't need to because Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you and he's ready to help you up again. <laughs> he's reaching out his hand. There's so many people in depression. Come up, pray with me. See, Jesus, Jesus, here I am. I come with wide, wide open hands. Please let me see your holy face. I know you're full of loving grace. And now I want to share with you Romans 8, 28 says, the things have to work together for good. And now you're asking, how can it be that such a mistake works together for good? I tell you a few reasons. Number one, patience is a fruit of the Spirit. And we all need to learn patience and enduring and long-suffering. These are words we do not like. But in Revelation 1, 9, there's an amazing scripture. And then he says, I, John, your brother and companion with you. And now he says, companion with you in three things. In the tribulation and the kingdom and patient endurance in Jesus Christ. So he says, I'm a companion. I'm your companion in three things that are always in the package of being in Christ. It's three things. It's tribulation, clipsis in Greek, bedrängnis in German. It's not nice, no. And Jesus says in the Gospel of John, in the world you will have this tribulation. You will have this clipsis. You will have this anxiety. You will have it. Surely you will have it. There's no doubt. You will have this in this world. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Be of good cheer. I have endured this world and I've overcome it. And because I overcome, you can also overcome. That's why Paul in Romans 8.37 says, in all of this, we are more than conquer us, more than overcome us through the one who loved us, not through our own strength, not through our own power, but because Jesus is in us. And every time you are falling, he lifts you up. Every time you are weak, he is strong. Every time you feel like I cannot go on, he picks you up and says, yes, you can, because I could. I can. He was victorious on the cross. Once God gave me a song, and he's, this song said, For the Lord is our God, and He is our fortress. I'm singing it faster. We will go from strength to strength, and we will be victorious. For Jesus was on the cross. Jesus was on the cross, and He will be for us today. In these words, the message is, because He's our God and He's our fortress, we will go from strength to strength and we will be victorious because Jesus was on the cross and He was not there alone. He was not there for Himself. He was on the cross for us. He was on the cross for you and me. He hung there 
to be victorious for us, to overcome for us. And he prayed and said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. And he overcame with perfect love. And then he died and rose again. And now this type of Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit, that is perfect love, he poured out into our hearts. So you, if you understand the tribulation and patience, enduring and long suffering are in the package together with the kingdom, being a royal priest. So many Christians, they only want to have the kingdom, the blessing, the lordship, the glory, the glory. We want the glory. But you and I, we know. We don't want the suffering. We don't want the cross. You know what the cross is? So many years I could not bring this together. One day I was like, wow, God, you're the God of glory, the God of blessing. And the next day I was like, but Jesus said, deny yourself and take up your cross. And step by step, I'm bringing it together. The answer is Jesus wants to bless you. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. That's why he says in Psalm 37, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. You know what the desire of my heart is? The desire of my heart and of your heart, if you are born from above, is to be able to love to be able to rejoice in all things, to be able to be so patient that nothing, nothing, nothing could bring us out of that peace of God. I've got seven kids and so many times I lost my temper. So many times I was not able to stay patient. And you know what? This grieved my spirit. It hurt myself. And it, I can feel Jesus standing there. Wow, I saw your heart and I wanted to teach you, but you would not listen. You know, the desire of my heart is to be patient. And if you're truly, if you're truly a follower of Christ, it's the desire of your heart. And many times we have to go through testings and tribulations so that God can teach us to be patient. And our flesh doesn't like it. I know our fourth child, Magdalena, she was in intensive care for four months after her premature birth. She came to this world with 732 grams, less than a kilo. And we didn't like it. Our flesh didn't like it. No, it didn't feel so good. But we had to go through it. And that's what James says. In James chapter 1, would you turn to it? Because you and I, we want to learn, right? We want to learn to live in the glory. That's what this channel is about. That's what following Jesus is about. We want to learn to live a life of an overcomer. And you have to understand that trials and tribulations are in the package. James 1.3 Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience. Be assured. Be assured and know that God has a reason. And then in verse 2, James said, Consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are <laughs> enveloped in ore and counter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. Count it for pure joy. There should be better translations. I know it in German by heart. Counted pure joy. So many of us, we get angry. We say, we ask God again and again, God, please give me a life without testings and trials. 
you know what this is? This is stupid. This prayer is stupid. I got once a revelation from God that trials and testings for us should be like weightlifting. Like going to exercise in a fitness club. And you need weights. You need something to strengthen you so your muscles can grow, that your, your faith can grow, your, your faith can become strong. So you need obstacles, you need hindrances, you need something that your faith gets stronger. And if we pray, oh God, help me to become a blessed couch potato. Help me <laughs> that I wouldn't have any trials. I wanna be so victorious that I know uh, where it would see a problem again. This is crazy. You know what we should pray? Like Paul said it in Ephesians 6. Be strong in the Lord. Become strong. You should pray, God, help me to become so strong that whatever test comes, and if the test is that your child dies, oh my God, I don't want it. But I know a good sister and had experienced it, that her lo beloved son would die with an overdose, but still he was saved. But it's so painful. I know some Christians, they lost a child. In Germany, we had a Christian family, and their like 12-year-old, I think, son was sexually abused and killed by his stupid German. That is crazy. I know a German family that went to Turkey to be missionaries. And you may, may have heard of that missionary. He and two other Turkish men, they were tortured about an hour, cut into pieces alive by some crazy Turkish people. And you know what? Up to today, the Turkish government was not able to really sentence and condemn these young stupid kids that killed them this can be so painful to lose your husband have your husband cut into pieces it's horrible i don't want it i don't want to lose my wife i don't want to lose a person i don't want to lose my parents I don't want to lose my kids but the truth is in this world we have tribulations and i tell you God knows about tribulations. I tell you, so many people, they're angry on God. They say, God, if you're real, why did you allow my mother to die? Why did you allow this to happen or that to happen? I tell you, if you want to understand this question, why? God, why did you allow this? You have to get another answer. The answer is, I suffered even more. I know all your pain. It's in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. <clears throat> there it says, We have a high priest that knows all our weaknesses and all our sufferings. Chapter 4. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weakness and infirmities and inability. But we have one who has been tempted in every respect as we are yet without sinning. Jesus knows. Jesus knows. We should never forget. If we come into trials and temptations, Jesus suffered even more. That's why on purpose he chose chose 12 good friends and one was cheating on him and betraying him and selling him. How does it feel if a good friend in whom you three years invested into, like Judas, just sells you for 30 silver coins? How does it feel if another good friend whom you invested into three years, teaching him everything you knew. He swears and says, by God, I swear, I will not leave you. 
I will stick with you to the end. I'm your best friend. If he promises that. And within the next 12 hours, three times, he denies that he even knows you. How must this feel? I tell you what. If your very best friend is so mean to you, that's one of the hardest things for our heart. It's so, so painful. I have experienced it sometimes. If good friends kick you in the ass, if, if good friends kick you in the back, that is painful. That's what happens in divorces. Your best friend who said, I will love you forever. One day he turns around and says, I hate you. Get out of my eyes. That is painful, but Jesus knows it. Jesus knows. Yes, Jesus knows. And he understands. And he went through this for you and for me. Why? So that he could help us. That's what if Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in good time for every need in the right time you can find mercy and grace at the right time you can find mercy and grace you can find that patience you can find that power to overcome you can find new hope you can get comfort if you just come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. He said, come to me, all your heavy laden and, and burden. Come to me. Come, come, come. You need to come right now. You need to come in the time when you are in trial, when you feel like falling. God taught me, if you if you just in the moment of stumbling and if you're in the trial and you feel, I'm so weak, God, I cannot make it, start praying. Start praying in tongues. Lord, help me. Start praying in the Spirit. Start crying out to Jesus. Say, God, help me, help me, help me. Pour out your heart. Once God gave me four steps to freedom and he said, number one step is pour out your heart before God. Just pour out all these tears. Pour out all this discouraged man. Start weeping before. And then cry out and say, God, help me. I'm too weak. Help me that I want to forgive, that I want to get up again. Sometimes we don't even want to get up again. We're so discouraged. We lay on the floor and we say, I want to be on the floor. I want to be on the ground. I deserved it. I don't want to get up. That's the spirit of depression. But God told me, in that moment, pour out your heart and then pray, God, I don't even want to get up. Help me that I start wanting again. That's the first step after, have, you know, after you have poured out your heart. Help me that I even start wanting again. Because Philippians 2, I think 13 says, God is it who works the willing and the fulfilling in our heart. He can turn your heart. He's the God of all comfort, says 2 Corinthians 1, 3. And He knows how to comfort our heart, even if we don't know how. If you've lost a child, if you have went through a divorce, <laughs> If you went through such a pain that you think this is impossible, why do I live on this earth? I don't want any more. If that's you, I want to pray with you right now. <laughs> this is the Spirit of God who's fighting for you and says, I want you to stand up again. I don't want you to kill yourself. No, you don't need to. Because Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you. And he's ready to help you up again. <laughs> he's reaching out his hand. There's so many people in depression. You see, this is what, what's happening here. 
God told me he wants to use me through the internet to help so many people. He's here. He's right with you. He's right with you. Come up, pray with me. Say, Jesus, Jesus, here I am. I come with wide, wide open hands. Please let me see your holy face. I know you're full of loving grace. Jesus, Jesus, I need you. Because what I want, I just can't do. To do your will is still a fight. Because flesh brings death, but your spirit's life. Now pray with me, Jesus, Jesus, I surrender. Take me with your loving, tender. Come and send your holy fire and burn away my flesh desire. God bless you. I know that right now, the spirit of comfort is there. I'm gonna to go to this piano. I'm gonna sing this song for you, which has just started. God bless you, amen. But the truth is, in this world, we have tribulations. And I tell you, God knows about tribulations. So many people, they're angry on God. They say, God, if you're real, why did you allow my mother to die? Why did you allow this to happen or that to happen? I tell you, if you want to understand this question, why? God, why did you allow this? The answer is, I suffered even more. I know all your pain. 